Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Here we are. It's Tuesday of Derby Week. Uh, we have got so much planned for this show. We got graphics, graphics, graphics for you folks loaded with info, our picks, our wagers. So let's get going. Yeah, let's get going, Matt. Here's our cover boy. Uh, that is Forte. Forte on track at Churchill Downs. He's looked good since he's been here, Matt. But most importantly, well, that's a big part of the importantly, but also importantly, he drew post number 15. Uh, we're we're going to take a quick look at these post positions and some morning line odds, Matt. But uh, a lot of this boils down to who gets lucky and who doesn't get crunched at the start. But no complaints for number 15 for Forte. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the case uh, with everybody. Uh, it didn't seem like there were any horses that got a particularly bad draw, which I like you pointed out uh, wisely, Brian. At this point, it's going to come down to racing luck at the beginning of uh, uh, coming out of the gate. Who's going to who's going to try and get the lead, and what happens, and and moving in, moving out, and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. A lot of it happens right out of the start, Matt. You're right. But then there's other trouble to be avoided along the way. And uh, it takes a really good rider, and it takes a whole lot of luck to have a great trip in the Kentucky Derby. But some of these horses will have very good trips. Some will not. Uh, Hit show down in the one. He was a long shot. I was starting to consider more and more as the last few weeks went along and that one post is always a little bit of a worry, but uh, you can do well from there. It's easier than it was uh, with the uh, with the new gate and everything. So we'll we'll see. Hit show, verifying, could show a lot of speed. He's in the two. Uh, to tell you the truth, I didn't love the post for two fills, who's going to be a horse I'm going to use this week in number three, but uh, nor do I love the morning line, only 12 to one, but uh, you can win from three for sure. Some of the other favorites, we see Tappet Trice in the five hole, Practical Move in the 10 hole, Angel of Empire in the 14 hole, and the Japanese star, Derma Sodagaki in the 17 hole. Again, Matt, I, I don't think any complaints there for those five favorites. Yeah, I think so, Brian. You know, so I don't know if it changes my opinion of how Derma Sodagaki is going to run in here. Uh, so from the 17 hole, does that mean uh, that he's more or less likely to go early? I'm not sure. It didn't change the, that I'm not sure part of it for me. Yeah, yeah. There, there could be some extra ground to run, uh, trying to show a lot of speed from out there. But on the other hand, you know, if you don't go for the lead, you, you, you could have more traffic problems that way. So, it, again, it's, it's a whole lot of racing luck. Uh, with the post, uh, the morning line odds. I already mentioned that two fills, 12 to one, was a little lower than I thought. The top two are, are about where I thought. Maybe Top and Trice at five to one is a little closer than his stable mate Forte than I thought. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with that. Um, you know, there are plenty of people that saying, you know, Top and Trice is going to take temp plenty of action, which which I agree with, but but I don't see how Forte, with his record uh, uh, coming into the Derby, how he's not going to be the clear favorite. Yeah, he really should be, Matt. I think you're right. Forte, the two-year-old champion, has done everything right uh, going back to last fall into this year. Two nice wins at Gulfstream Park, a deserving favorite. But we do think that his stable mate, Tapa Trice, will be the second uh, choice. Uh, when the gates open, Tapa Trice, of course, on a roll of late, and uh, he's won two graded stakes in a row now, the top Tampa Bay Derby and the Bluegrass. And Bluegrass horses generally get that in this Kentucky Derby as well. Angel of Empire, impressive winner of the Arkansas Derby. Practical Move has won three straight uh, races in uh, Southern California. Derma Sotagaki coming off a big win in the UAE Derby, plus all the Japanese success. Of late makes him a big contender. Kings Barnes, I thought, might be a little bit lower. He's the six, which is a good spot for a speedy horse. Number 12, we know Jose Ortiz is riding Kings Barnes. Remember, Flavian Pratt chose to ride Angel of Empire over Kings Barnes. I could see it being a little bit lower than 12 to 1, though. 
Yeah, absolutely. Todd Pletcher, Horace Kings Barnes, uh, undefeated. Uh, that right there is, is going to mean the horse is going to get bet. Yeah, yeah, agree. Hey, Matt, we've talked about these horses for months now and specifically these horses for weeks. Um, let's get right into our top picks for the race. Then we can talk about some suggested wagers we have. We also want to do some Kentucky Oaks. But uh, if we're going to start with our top picks, let's see. Let's see if I can get. Well, top picks. That's the one I wanted. Here it is. Sorry about that. So our top three picks. And I see some similarities here, Matt. I'm going to let you go first, explaining why you have, number one, who you have. Yeah, Brian. Uh, um, yeah, we do have some similarities, and I guess that's not surprising. You know, we go through the exercises that we do getting ready for the Derby, and we and we do it on the air with you for you folks in Horse Center when we do shows like Pretenders and Contenders. You know, we are – eliminating horses from consideration and zooming in on the horses that we like. And I think that shows up uh, a little bit here. Um, I tell you, Brian, my top three, I actually considered making my top three, the three Pletcher horses uh, uh, in here, but I, I didn't do that. Um, I really believe that Tappa Trice is coming into the race with one of the best performances with his victory uh, in the bluegrass. Um, but again, uh, you, you can't fall Forte. And, and we both seem to kind of feel that way, that we have to include Forte. So I had Forte as my second pick. And my third pick was Practical Move, because Practical Move, you know, clearly became the best horse coming out of California. Um, has won his last three races. His victory in uh, the Santa Anita Derby was very good, going a mile and an eighth. He's got high speed figures uh, from his victories, regardless of what kind of speed figures you might look at. So um, practical move uh, for who has been in the barn of Tim Yachtin from the beginning, um, made it as my third pick. Yeah, Practical Move will be my top pick, the horse you were just talking about, Practical Move. Is it, horses miss some time with weather problems out in Southern California, and I think Practical Move did did as well, and I think maybe we didn't see his best in the Santa Anita Derby. Now, it was his third straight graded stakes win for the son of Practical Joke, but I think Practical Move can move forward. I'm looking for a horse to move forward here. That's what it's going to take to win the Kentucky Derby. Practical move, I do think, can move forward off that. I think he also has the right style of staying in touch and then jumping to the lead as they turn for home. At least that's what I'm hoping. Love the 10 to 1 on the morning line. I like the post position in the middle of the pack. He'll be my top pick. Two fills, it's going to be my top long shot. Uh, didn't love the three hole. I'm going to play him about the same as I play Forte. Uh, who I think is the horse to beat, and I have a feeling you think he's the horse to beat. We're both trying to keep the favorite out of our one spot, but Forte, of course, we have a lot of respect for him. But I think Two Fills is another horse who's gotten better. He's experienced. He's won over Churchill Downs, and I think he's one of those horses who can make maybe an early move that often does so well in the Kentucky Derby. So those are my top three. Matt, real quick, it strikes me that we have only four horses listed among our top three picks uh, here for both of us, and that leaves a lot of good horses, horses like Angel of Empire, horses like Derma Sotagaki and King's Barnes and Verifying off the list. Yeah, Brian, you know, the, uh, playing the Kentucky Derby means that you have to make tough decisions, and, and I had to make tough decisions uh, aplenty, uh, you, as, as we'll see. I, I left off completely some horses that I thought that I was considering uh, to be amongst the, the top three, but you can't use all of them. I certainly can't, not with my bankroll. You can't use all of them. You don't want to use only favorites. You want to mix in some prices. So when you want to mix in some prices and you can't use all the short prices, that means you're going to leave off some very good horses, tough decisions. Agreed. Agreed. Well, let's, since we're talking about, getting into constructing wagers here, Matt. Let's really quick talk about our top long shots because I think that's important, who we intersperse 
both uh, both for the top spot, but also for the spots below. So let's look at our top long shots here. And I'm going to let you go first. We do have four different horses. We, we each picked two. And we have four different horses. Matt, talk about your top two real quick. Okay. And, and uh, those of you that watch uh, Horse Center every week loyally, and I know there's uh, at least a few of you that I can say that of, are going to look at my long shot picks and see Disarm there. And, and you guys got to be saying, Matt, what is with you? One week you love Disarm. The next week you're not playing Disarm. And now here you are. You've got Disarm back as your derby long shot well yeah i do you know I, I try not to have a closed mind and and what all all of the pieces of disarm getting into the kentucky derby in his last race when he would needed to run at least third in the lexington and he did just that that's what he did he, he finished third and you can look at that as Maybe not the most positive thing because he didn't look like he was going to finish second and he sure didn't look like he was going to win that race. But I, I think that that's all they were trying to do is get into the race. And then you come back and Disarm has a workout the other day, totally uncharacteristic of a Steve Asmussen uh, runner, um, where he was the bullet workout. Um, at Churchill Downs for five furlongs out of a, it wasn't a huge number. I mean, it was like 20, 25 horses or something, but he was a bullet work. And, and Asmussen doesn't do that. Uh, um, it it kind of grabbed me that there's something about this horse. And he's got the breeding, uh, my friend, right? Uh, a gun runner and uh, out of a tappet uh, mare to go the mile and a quarter distance, which uh, Asmussen is very bullish on with this arm. We're looking at a horse here that, I don't know, could be a 30 to 1, going to be 20 to 1 for sure. There's a little bit of buzz, I think, about all this with with this arm. Yeah, and your other horse, Matt, is Skinner. Yeah, Skinner. Um, certainly uh, Skinner from the barn of uh, John Sheriffs got into the derby just recently and uh skinner is a horse that appears to be getting better got a couple of good races a couple of thirds in his last couple starts that includes the kind of blanket finish in the santa anita derby where skinner was coming strong at the end didn't get the smoothest didn't get a perfect trip in that race but but got into it at the end and was closing on uh, in there uh, with Mandarin Hero and uh, and Practical Move, a horse that we both like. So this is a horse, John Sheriff's a trainer that knows how to win this race, that seems to have some talent, and is going to come with good odds. Yeah, actually, the two, I think, of the long shots that might unfortunately get that a little bit more than I would want them to yes. would include one of yours and one of mine, and that's Skinner and two Phils. I'm, I'm worried that both of them... I was hoping on paper, I thought they could be 20 to one or more, but I think they will get some action here. I do like both of your picks, Matt. I think Disarm is a horse who could be getting better, could be ready to to fire his, the best race of his life. And at 10 furlongs, you got to give him a shot. And Skinner's a horse who is getting better. He keeps coming. I worry that he doesn't always get by horses in the stretch. Um, both of yours, I think, are contenders to hit the board for sure. I also considered horses like Confidence Game, who's been working really well for trainer Keith DeSormo. Uh, uh, Hit Show, I started to look at his record and the way he finishes and the trouble he had in the Wood Memorial. I don't love the one post, though, and that kind of took me off. The two I decided on, though, you, you all know who my top one is, Two Phils. I, I think Two Phils is the one long shot that can win the Kentucky Derby, or at least the one long shot that wouldn't surprise me if he won the Kentucky Derby. I think Two Phils is a really nice horse who's getting better coming off his best performance yet working great looking good physically i like two fills uh quite a bit in here and and hopefully i'll get closer to 21 20 to 1 than 10 to 1 but we'll see the other horse i think should be a bomb that's the bill mott trained rocket ken he just seems like a grinder who i think is going to run all day long he's been between horses he's been bumped around a little bit. He's run against good horses and he, he keeps running down the stretch. And that is often a horse that can fill out the exotics. So Rocket Ken 
is kind of my bomb in the Kentucky Derby. All right, Matt, you ready to give your uh, your suggested wagers for sure. Kentucky Derby? What sure. we did, folks, we don't want to go. Uh, we don't want to make this show a forty-five minute show. Nobody wants us for forty-five minutes. So we're going to go uh, just with our one favorite wager on the Kentucky Derby. I'll let Matt go first. And Matt, there's your there's your screen. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Uh, um, you know the the last discussion about the long shots leads right into this for me because um, I like to play the trifecta in the Kentucky Derby. It's the only wager that I will be making on the Kentucky Derby. Uh, for me, it's just you know it's so hard to pick a horse on top and and just bet to win and and expect to be able to do that out of a 20 horse field. I like the trifecta because you can spread. You can get a nice combination of shorter prices with longer prices. And that's what I've done here in uh, uh, these trifecta part wheels. I've got my top three choices. If you remember that from earlier in the show, Tapa Trice, Forte, and practical move in the top of the trifectas, both of the tickets, and then in both in the in the tickets, I have switched the second and third positions with the horses. In uh, if we look at the first bet in the second position, I've got a combination of my top three horses: Tapatrice, Forte, Practical Move, with some horses that I hope will be more longer priced horses that will be coming at the end passing tired horses and have a chance of getting into the trifecta in the second or third position so i add in angel of empire not going to be a short short price but not you know uh, maybe around 10 to 1 or so dermasodagaki verifying probably a big price confidence game big price skinner a big price uh, also and i have a couple of other horses these are the key horses for me that i want that i have to have one of them finish in the trifecta that's disarm and two fills that's all those horses brian all those horses only 21 bucks yeah Next. yeah you for second and third, so you got a $42 wager yep. total, right? So you got a $42 wager. And what Matt's saying is he thinks Tapit Trice, Forte, or Practical Move are the one of those three is the likely winner of the Kentucky Derby. And he thinks Disarm or Two Fills. One of those two will run second or third. Then he has a whole bunch of horses that he thinks are contenders in the other spot, second or third. And it, it makes a lot of sense. Folks, I like to try to do different wagers here to give you a little different look, but I think Matt and I were on the same page with this bet. And the, the 50 cent wager in the trifecta is part of the equation because you get into the superfectus that's a minimum of $2 for the Kentucky Derby, and it just grows too quickly with such a wide open race. And you're quickly betting over a thousand dollars, and I, I'm not. Neither of us, neither of us are betting over a thousand dollars on the Kentucky Derby. So the Superfecta, the exact is another way to go, uh, but then you don't, you you, you don't. I, I don't think you take advantage enough of the twenty horse field where just getting a horse with double digit odds into the trifecta really exponentially makes that pay a lot more than the than the exact is. So Matt and I both ended up with the trifecta. Having said that. I do like some other horses in multiple race wagers, and I certainly will be playing a uh, Philly Lake Southlawn in the Oaks and a horse called Up to the Mark in the uh, early, uh, the old Forester Turf Classic. And that's a, a, a two day bet. Uh, and if those two can get into uh, the winner's circle, then I look to be winning that bet. For, but for this favorite Kentucky Derby wager, I went with a triple. And it and actually, honestly, it's very much like Matt's, although I kind of covered myself a little bit more. My top three just replaced Tap and Strike with two, two fills, Tap and Trace with two fills. So I have practical move, two fills, Forte on top. One of them has to win. You have to make some tough decisions. Uh, then I added all the horses I think are real contenders. Certainly Tap and Trice, Angel of Empire, Derma Sotogaki. They're in the second spot. I also added my bomb, 
Rocket Can. So that's seven horses in the second spot. And then a third horse, a uh, third spot, I wanted to add even more. So I have all seven of those. And then I added some more long shots. I added Skinner, who I certainly think could hit the board. Confidence game working well for Keith DeSormo, a, a potential live long shot, even though he hasn't run in 10 weeks. Disarm for all the reasons Matt talked about. And yeah, Hit Show, another long shot I consider who could hit the board for trainer Brad Cox. So that's 11. Uh, this 50 cent trifecta, though, only costs $81. That's not a lot to hit the trifecta in the Kentucky Derby. And as long as I'm right with one of the top three, I think I have a reasonable shot of hitting the trifecta in the Kentucky Derby, Matt. Yeah, Brian. And, and what's fun about it also is, you know, if, if, if things fall, ideally, meaning like you get your highest price horse in the wind slot and and then in the second and third you get you get a couple horses who are at least 20 30 to 1 you get that kind of combination come in you're talking about a big number trifecta uh coming out of that you're talking about maybe close to uh a thousand dollar trifecta of course it can fall the other way and i've had this happen with this wager i've i've hit five, $600 trifectas, but then I've had it come in also, but it was shorter price in each position than I'd love. And I end up getting, you know, a 60 or $70 trifecta, but that's what you got to, you know, you got to take your shots. Yeah. Yeah. And you get one long shot in a 20 horse field. That trifecta is going to be nice. You get two long shots in that 20 horse field. And then you're really talking about a excellent looking trifecta last year's trifecta played great paid great with uh, of course a big long shot on top but two horses who made a lot of sense in second and third all right folks that's our kentucky derby analysis final analysis uh, favorite wager and top picks and top long shots we hope you helps uh, we hope that helps with the betting a lot i already mentioned that i like up to the mark in that uh three race wager the oaks the Turf Classic, which is Saturday, the Oaks is Friday, Turf Classic is Saturday, and the Kentucky Derby. But we're going to concentrate on the Oaks a little bit here, Matt. Let's look at the field for the sister race of the Kentucky Derby, the biggest three-year-old Philly race of the year, full field of 14. Here we go. Matt, the favorite, as expected, lucky number seven, wet paint, go Dolphin, Brad Cox, Flavian Pratt, five to two. Yeah, um, and, and uh, doing really well in terms of winning races right now. And, and you already said it, uh, Brian, uh, Brad Cox uh, uh, winning uh, a streak of races, Flavian Pratt. This is a horse that is going to be uh, uh, well supported at the windows. We're, we're talking about a field of 14 here, not quite as formidable as the 20 in the Derby, but in my opinion, it's a pretty wide open field of 14, almost to the extent that, you know, I don't know how surprised I'd be if any of these win. Well, there's there's some that would surprise me, Matt. Uh, I'm surprised Dorth Vader is not the longest shot on the board. Uh, she is uh, uh, 20 to 1. I think there's a 30. Yeah, I promise her America's higher. I, I would pick any of them over Dorth Vader, and now we can watch Dorth Vader win the Oaks. I, I sure hope not, because I won't have her in any of my tickets. Uh, what paint? Yeah, three straight uh, stakes wins at Oaklawn Park. She's the horse to beat. She likes to rally, and she's going to have to prove that uh, she uh, doesn't need Oaklawn Park to do her best. So she comes to Churchill as the favorite. Her stable mate, just insider, is the number six botanical. Chris Landeros gets a big mount here in the Kentucky Derby. Four to one on the morning line match. She's got some speed, but she has to prove it on dirt. Yeah, she's been doing her uh, best running uh, uh, at, at Turfway Park, uh, as Brad Cox has done with other horses, spreading out so many uh, options that he uh, that he has in his barn. Uh, but but I'll tell you, Brian, when I, I'll go back to that, uh, wide open nature of this field. Uh, this is the kind of field where I don't know. I I, I would would be very reluctant to want to pick the favorite on top, particularly when it's going to be five to two. I don't know, maybe even two to one or so um, with uh, wet paint. 
Yeah, she's the, she's the one to be. It's kind of comparable to Forte in a way, but maybe even more questions in Forte. Probably an easier field that she has to beat than Forte. But uh, yeah, th there's reason to think she is beatable. I, I still like her to a point. Uh, but the horse I like best actually matched through the four hole. That's Southlawn. Southlawn had had a little physical issue as a two-year-old. You're not going to see a lot of great form on her as a two-year-old. But Norm Cassie really liked her. She worked up a storm for months in a row at fairgrounds, and her races followed suit. A really big allowance win, and then a very easy win. She she just pulled away down the stretch from some good fillies in the Fairgrounds Oaks. The Fairgrounds Oaks is a race that produces Kentucky Oaks winners. It's produced more than any other prep for the Kentucky Oaks in the last quarter century. Uh, I like South Lawn quite a bit, and she's been working well at Churchill since she came up from New Orleans, and that's, I think, a great sign. Third start of the year, the number four. I love those morning line odds too, Matt, eight to one. Yeah, I do too, Brian. Uh, uh... As I said, I'm reluctant to uh, uh, bet on the short prices here, bet on these Brad Cox horses, which you know are going to take uh, plenty of action and, and be short, particularly uh, in this 14-horse field that's wide open. Some Maybe some of the best uh, three-year-old fillies uh, are not even in this race. A couple of them are uh, on the also-eligible list. One of them is staying out in California. Um, I like uh, a, a lot of things about South Lawn also. Definitely a filly that appears to be uh, doing better. A mile and an eighth is going to be good for her as a daughter of Pioneer uh, of the Nile. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, the kind of number that I want to see, eight to one or so in this field. Yeah, and, and it's interesting a little bit to me that the uh, uh, same – owner Robert Masterson that uh, campaigned uh, Tepin about a decade ago. Uh, Norm Cassie was with Tepin as his fa uh, father's assistant. He was with Tepin all the time. Now Norm Cassie, of course, is on his own. He trained South Lawn. His uh, father, I almost said his sire, which I guess would have been true as well, has Wonder Wheel, who's the two-year-old champion, but she's over for 2 this year. She drew the five with Joel Rosario at 12 to 1 on the morning line. Yeah, um, the champion from last year, the Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile Phillies winner, the two-year-old uh, Philly champion, hasn't been doing as well, um, has been running uh, her races this year a little farther off the pace than she did as a two-year-old um, when she was at her best. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the Oaks that we see uh, uh, Joel Rosario and Mark Cassie, maybe going back to that strategy from last year a little bit more with Wonder Wheel and get her into the race right away. Yeah, and and there is some speed in this race. This is a race uh, that's not devoid of speed, botanical, coming from the uh, all weather top of the surface at Turfway Park. Maybe flying connection outside with Florent Giroux, Dorth Vader who I thought was a long shot. She'll be ridden by Louis Saez. They could all show some speed. As far as some more live long shots, Matt, you said it's a wide open race. I think the 11, defining purpose, coming off an Ashland win. The 13, affirmative lady, Johnny V, up in the saddle, coming off a nice win at Gulfstream Park for trainer Graham Motion. And the 14, pretty mischievous, has been a really consistent filly all along. Yeah, and... and uh... The last two that you mentioned out in the 13 and 14 holes, maybe their odds will will be a little bit higher than we might have expected if they were posted a little bit more uh, ideally. But I agree, both of those are horses who are in good form, coming from excellent barns, experienced, talented trainers and jockeys, um, and both have a shot to be uh, part of things in the Oaks. Excellent, Matt. All right. Are you ready for your top picks? Sure. Let's do it. Okay. I'll let you go first. The top picks for the Kentucky Oaks. Go for it, Matt. Okay. Uh, and I guess we got a little bit of similarity here, uh, uh, Brian. Uh, I like South Lawn also. I like the price, as I said, right from the beginning of our Oaks discussion uh, today. I, I don't want the favorite on top. Um, I want a better price. That South Land. Got plenty of respect, though, for Wet Paint, who I have in the second spot as the horse to beat 
And I like one of the ones you mentioned just before, Brian. I like Pretty Mischievous. Uh, Would have loved maybe being not quite so far outside. But we're talking about a field uh, in the Oaks where I don't think, obviously does not matter as much uh, being on the far outside in the Oaks as it does in the Derby. All right. Yeah, we are surprisingly similar. South Lawn, definitely the top pick for me. And to tell you the truth, if if every filly in the in the race had the same odds, she would be my top pick. I like her quite a bit. So anything near that eight to one morning line, I'm going to be really happy. And I'm going to use her in multi-race ragers for sure. What, po- what paint is the horse to beat? I fear the Cox horses the most. If South Lawn gets beat, wet paint first. And then... Um, uh, botanical second, but I did say there was some speed in here. Botanical's got to prove it to me on dirt. So I threw in a long shot in the third spot. We talked about some of the good options. I think Gambling Girl is a good option. She, the New York bred, runs a lot of good races. She's a filly that can rally. Although I'd like her a little bit closer than she was when she was a late running second last time in the Gazelle. I think she's going to have big odds in here. So she is my third pick in the Kentucky Oaks. All right, Matt Shipman, that's it. We're we're we we put some. Uh, this is the this is the show that everybody wants to know what we're doing, what we're betting. Our, our reputations are on the line, Kentucky Derby especially, and the Kentucky Oaks a little bit. I hope you're right because a lot of our picks are the same. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be rooting for you. You'll be rooting for me. Uh, 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 enjoying all the action on Saturday and. And Friday from Churchill down, man, Brian, there are, I don't know, I didn't count them, but are there at least a dozen graded stakes races in the two days? There, There's champions coming back in, in other races outside of the Oaks and the Derby on both days. Really talented horses, big fields, uh, a lot to enjoy. Take care of your budgets, folks. You don't want to. Uh, you don't want to lose it all before you have a chance to make your derby bets or make your derby bets early on so you know you're covered. Yeah, good points, Matt. Uh, yeah, a, a smorgasbord of uh, great horses and great races over these two days at Churchill Downs, Friday and Saturday especially. Um, uh, yeah, uh, money's gold. Uh, uh, Philly, who could be an absolute superstar, she's uh, she's running in the eight bells. Uh, you got good night, Olive. Uh, uh, the champion uh, older female sprinter, uh, uh, Cody's Wish, returning from his first race uh, since the Breeders' Cup win last year. Uh, up to the mark is my turf horse in that uh, turf classic on Saturday. Extra Anejo. I don't, I don't think it's even a stakes race, but Extra Anejo, a three-year-old who could be really, really good. So what a weekend at Churchill Downs. But of course, we'll all be watching the Kentucky Derby. Also, Matt, uh, we want to thank our uh, sponsor, uh, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Our good friend in Louisville, Candace Curtis, for the race graphics. And also, of course, Timeform US. We use their pace projections all the time. We didn't show them today. We did last week. But thanks to them, as always. And most of all, folks, thanks to you. If you haven't yet subscribed, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. Turn on the notifications. Leave a comment, even if you don't like what we had to say today. We'll see you next week talking Preakness and uh, talking a little bit about what went down this weekend at Churchill Downs. See you then.